Hey, so welcome back to part two of this how to make an MMO series. Today I'll be talking about uh, how we make cross region work, how we manage players, and about sharding. Uh, before we start, I would like to elaborate on some of the stuff I said last time, uh, specifically why we need to optimize for latency. And the reason is in your update loop for your servers, you need to know some state about the other um, uh, nodes in your network. And if so, yeah, I would like to show the top here. You have a um, a uh, frame or an update loop here, and you will use some amount of the time to compute the frame. You need some amount of time to do communication, and then you'll have some wait time which is your slack, which is the time that you have left to spare. In a real scenario, you, you might be able to compute and communicate at the same time, making these two overlap and giving you uh, some more slack. But the problem with latency is that if we have two different nodes, so this is a node and this is a node in the middle here, um, then when you compute and then send, the time before the other one receives it is that's latency right and so this kind of determines how fast your update loot can go and you kind of want it to be able to go pretty fast so you need to optimize for low latency yeah and so what you really want is something in the button here where you compute and then you send at the same time and you receive at the same time and then you can have a lot of slack. Yeah, so other than that, what did we miss last time? So we didn't talk about chat, friend list and inventory, chatting and cross play. So cross region play. So let's talk about chatting. So you want to have your system as distributed as possible. So you just want to have a dedicated server for chatting. Um, that's not integrated with the rest. You don't really need to integrate it with your game loop. Most games don't have chatting as something you do in the game loop. Uh, sometimes some games have something like a slash something command, like slash dance or something. And that needs to be on in your, like your game server needs to know about that, but just handling them as commands and send them directly to the server instead of the chat. Uh, okay, so if you want to do this, you just have a bunch of clients and you know, you have your game servers, your clients talk to your game server, they talk to a chat server, they might also talk to a download server or something else, right? And you just have these as different things, right? They, have, they might have completely different IPs, uh, they might be in different buildings. You don't care. They might sometimes need to talk to each other, but mostly, mostly not. Um, if you need a friend list, well, that if you want, yeah, you know, that might need to talk to the chat server or something. So you might combine those two, or you might just keep them separate. Uh, but just do the same as with the chat server, right? Uh, so inventory is a little bit more difficult because many times your game server needs to know about like, okay, this dude used the item in his inventory slot six. What is that? And so you can't just remove that from the game server. The game server needs to know about that. So there are in general two approaches. You have the database hold the data or you have the game service hold the data. If you have the database hold the data, you have all your servers and then they just constantly talk with the database, like all the time. Every time someone uses an item or you, you know their gold gets updated or something, they talk to the database. Um, and you also have to save their position sometimes. So do you do that every frame or how often do you do that? Oh, yuck, right? And now you have something else. You have added latency. I mean, that latency might be able to go in parallel with your other latency, but you still can have a latency problem. You can also have a bandwidth problem if you have a lot of stuff going on in this network. Um, 
But one of the cool things about this is it's pretty robust to server failures. So if a server dies, your progress won't get lost. Um, yeah, that that's kind of neat. Um, another problem with this server architecture is if you always just assume that the database has the newest version of whatever is whatever state the player has. Uh, then when you pass one player from one server to another server, well, where should it draw the data from? The database or the other server? If you draw it from the database, then you have to know that the database is actually up to date. And it might not be. Uh, it might be that the server that passes uh, the data it just updated. You know, you just finished a trade as you went through uh, some border. Uh, which gave you, I don't know, 100 gold or something, and then you transfer it, right? If this one reads before this 100 gold get transferred to the database, you're going to have a bad time. So you need to ensure somehow that the data in the database is up to date when you read from it. And um, you can do a trick where you just pass the data from here to here, which is faster, and you would always have the up-to-date version. Um, so if you take that to the next level, why not just have the data on your um, on your game servers, and then just when you move from one server to the other server, you just both write to both the database saying, "Hey, I I updated this. This is what happened the last ten minutes," and then the other server just receives the new updated one, and you don't have to talk as much to the game server. And then when you do that, all of the other ones don't have to talk to the database. You only have to talk to the database when you move players around. So your latency is fixed. Um, you don't have as much as communication. And if you want some more robustness, you can have like every minute or every five minutes or every ten minutes, everyone just saves to the database. Uh, meaning you you know you will never have to roll back if one server crashes more than 10 minutes or one minute or whatever this is a problem that's very similar to a write through versus a write back cache and you know we always see write back winning in those scenarios and if you don't know what I'm talking about I'm talking about when you design CPUs uh, you have two architectures which is pretty, pretty much this the same problem just in a different setting um, and write back seems to be the, the way to go. So do that for your database. Uh, when we talk about sharding, uh, well, sharding is just you have uh, multiple instances of your world and you keep some players in some shard and some other ones in some other shards. Um, to not break the illusion of everyone being in the same world, you want people that are friends to be able to see each other. Um, so they don't have an awkward time where they're both in the same place, but they, they don't see each other. Um, now, yeah, like the, the easy first impression thing would be to just have a single computer distribute the workload to all the others, but then you'll have a choke point. So instead, you might just want to have all the clients talk directly to each of the shots. Um, but now we forgot about like, oops, uh, if if a client determines what server it joins, is there any security risks? Maybe. And how do you guarantee that friends see each other? Uh, since you don't know, since the client is kind of in control. Uh, and what you do instead is you just have a distributor, but you move it to the side. So it, it just communicates with each of the clients uh, to figure out which server it needs to go on. And then it communicates with the server saying, hey, you need to move to to you, you you will have this client and if a client connects to that server and that server sees that it doesn't own that client uh, then the, then the server has the ability to reject those client and you can run the algorithm that needs to figure out what where people need to go in order to see each other you just run that on the distributor um, and so for cross region play you have you know you might have one in EU one in USA and one in uh, Asia and then you still want 
friends to be able to see each other and you want it to be seamless hopefully um, but you want people that are local to the servers to connect to the local servers because that's way faster uh, and so the way I would do this is I would have each region own a respective client so when a user signs up for uh, your game they'll have to choose what region they're in and if they choose USA then they will be connected to the US server per default every time they open the game um, and then they will have the ability to visit other servers um, so in that way you can think about the clients being borrowed uh, from you know another server cluster um, and then when you're done with borrowing that that client you return it to the original place and you just give it the new state uh, so like oh while he was on my server this guy earned 200 gold and he added uh, he added some items and then you return that state back to the original owner and what I would do is I would just depending on your scenario you could have your friend list and chat server be totally global um, because those don't really need to go that fast um, and when you do that you kind of make your life a little bit easier but uh, that might not be a possibility in all cases um, so yeah you have to you, you really have to think about uh, security when you do this kind of stuff because you need to be able to ensure that it it is the servers that tell what the new state is and not the clients and so on and so forth um, and then it would also be a good idea if all servers know about all clients so if you have this front list server you know you want to optimize for when all different that so that all friends see each other and you can do that if a distributor knows about a friend list and it can see that someone else is online somewhere else it can ask for that one to come over here because it can see that it that person has many friends on on this EU server or something and then databases I'm gonna say good luck there's there's a lot of people online that talk about this who so I won't go into detail um, but I will have another um, talk about some some different problems uh, pretty much what protocols to use how you do ob object replication and how you can do prediction model and latency conversation and such and that's gonna be a part three of this uh, so I hope to see you there